Today we're going to show how to make a brush-on mold over a clay sculpture using Platsil Gel 25 and our new BR75D resin. Now, a lot of you have asked uh, to see exactly how much of each product we're using and what size kits we typically work out of. Now, we are not going to be using the entire 8-pound kit you see here, but for our silicone brush-on mold, we're going to be working out of an 8-pound kit of Platsil Gel 25. And of course, since this is a brush-on mold, we'll be thickening it with the 10 thick thickener, and I'll be using alternating coats uh, that are pigmented different colors using the white and red silicone pigment. And of course we'll be using a key sheet, some brushes, and 2500 spray release. Now for the mother mold, overall this is a pretty simple resin shell. I've cut out some little one by one legs that we'll be embedding in our resin, and we'll be working out of a gallon kit of BR75D. Now we won't be using the entire gallon kit, but I like to have plenty on hand for a mold like this. Now we'll be molding a sculpture we made in a previous video. This is a sculpt by Robert Burns of Cutting Edge Sculpture Tools. And a great video if you haven't seen this. I'll put a link to it in the video description. If you're new to sculpting, this is a great introduction to both uh, sculpture and sculpting tools. So be sure to check that out. And uh, an important note here, this is a monster clay sculpt, and one of the last things Robert did was he smoothed out everything with naphtha. And because of that, and since we don't want that to interfere with the mold making process, I made sure to allow that uh, clay sculpture to sit for a few days before we started this mold. Now, even though rubber doesn't typically... Now, even though silicone doesn't typically want to bond to clay, it's still a good idea to use a light spray of mold release all over the piece. Here we're using 2500 spray release, and then we're going to follow that up with a little bit of Vaseline all over that baseboard. And that just ensures that uh, since the wood is porous, that our silicone doesn't seep into the wood and grab onto any of the uh, porous wood surface. And now ready to start our silicone mold. Now, the first step before we start brushing uh, silicone all over our clay sculpt is we're going to pour up some mold keys because we need those to be set up by the time we get to that last coat of rubber. So for gel 25, it's important to understand some basic working properties of that silicone. It is a one-to-one -one mix ratio, which uh, has a five-minute working time and about a one-hour demold and it cures to about a 25 shore A, which is a medium softness silicone. And even though this is a low viscosity silicone, it can be thickened easily with 10 thicks for brush on applications like this. Now for the first layer, I mixed up about uh, 200 grams of part A and 200 grams of part B. And this, again, is a fairly low viscosity silicone, so it's very easy to dispense. And uh, ideally, I prefer to mix everything by weight, just because it's always that much more accurate. And uh, I can do it all in one container, like you see here. And there's no waste, and it's very easy to clean up later on. If I mix everything up properly, it easily peels out of the container. And now I'm pigmenting this with a little bit of white silicone pigment. And you'll see why here in a little bit. Uh, normally, Gel 25 is just a colorless liquid. But uh, we want to be able to see that contrast up against our sculpture. So we're going to add a little bit of white silicone pigment. And also it'll help later on with contrasting layers. Now, remember that we only have a five minute working time. So we want to mix thoroughly for about 30 to 45 seconds. And then I'm going to pour that into our key sheet. And real important step here, I like to do this before I do anything else because those keys need to be set up completely later on in the process because we're going to embed these in the last layer of silicone. So on average, a brush-on mold like this is going to take about three layers of silicone rubber. Uh, the first layer, what we call the print coat that we're doing here, and then two more brush-up layers that are thickened with tin thicks. Now for our first layer, it's real important so we don't disturb that texture, that we have minimal contact with that with the brush, and when we actually have to brush up against it, we brush very lightly so that we don't accidentally disturb the texture that we put on the piece. So I like to dump out that silicone and then move it around with the brush and let gravity steer that silicone into the detail of the piece. 
Now one of the nice things about uh, Gel 25 having a very low viscosity is it seeps in that detail really well and releases air bubbles easily. So it's very easy to get a bubble-free surface coat all over your piece. And this is your most important layer because this is what will actually be reflected in the finished part. So make sure that you take care to uh, do this right and get a bubble-free surface because there's no way to undo that later on when the mold is done. Now you'll notice that the excess silicone is slumped down to the baseboard and create a very wide flange and that is by design because for one thing it allows us a, an area to test to see if the mold is ready to move on but it also uh, plays a functional role as you'll see later on in the way our rubber mold seats into the mother mold. Now this is about 30 minutes later and uh, our silicone has uh, cured to the point where it's still a little uh, sticky on the surface, but it's cured enough to where it'll take another layer of silicone. And uh, you could allow it to sit a little bit longer, but you want to move on as fast as possible when you're making a mold like this, because if you wait too long, you're going to have trouble with uh, layers bonding to each other. Now for this layer, I'll be, I'm will be i mixing up a little bit more silicone. I'm mixing up 300 grams of A and 300 grams of B. And remember, you can do this by weight or volume. Uh, weight is just always going to be more precise, and it does minimize waste because you can mix up exactly what you need to the gram if necessary. Now for this particular batch, uh, we're going to be adding two things that we didn't put in the previous batch. This time we're switching colors. We're uh, adding red silicone pigment. And then I'm adding the 10 thick thickener. I'm adding about a gram of 10 thick thickener. It, you don't have to be super precise with that. Just a few little squirts or a few drops of that will be enough. And what the 10 thick thickener does is it converts the liquid silicone to a thixotropic gel, so a paste consistency that will stay up on a vertical surface. And that's important so we don't wind up with silicone just running off of all the high points of our sculpture. So once we've got that mixed in, we're ready to brush that on our sculpture. And remember, we have a five to six minute working time at room temperature. So you want to move fast. If you're in a hot area, that's going to accelerate the cure. Whereas if you're in a cooler area, cooler than 70 degrees, that's going to slow it down. So now we're ready to brush that on. And what I like to do here is use a brush for the initial application. Brush it on all over my piece, making sure I don't trap any air bubbles. And then once I've got that brushed all over, then I like to follow that up with a trowel. And in this case, using either the stir stick that I use to mix it up, or a popsicle stick, or even a palette knife. Any of those things work really well. But the key point here with the second coat is brushing it all over first to make sure we don't have any air entrapment between the first and second layer. And once we've got everything coated pretty well, then we can start using a stir stick or a trowel to smooth out that outside surface. Because what we want to do on a brush on mold is simplify the form so our finished rubber mold is a smooth shape that will easily demold from our resin shell. Now one thing you can see visually, but you can definitely tell when you're actually working with the material, is Gel 25 goes through some distinct stages there when you add the tin thicks, where it starts out kind of runny, and then it gradually thickens almost to like a bread dough consistency towards the end of its working time. So you can continue to trowel it even when it hits that stage, but just be aware that it will gradually get thicker and thicker as you're working with it. So sometimes when you add the tin thicks in the initial stages, you may not think it's responded, but it has. It just takes a little bit for that to react and start thickening up to a really thick paste. Now we're ready to put on our final coat of rubber. And before we mix it up and brush it on, we want to demold these little keys. These are the keys we cast up at the beginning of the video. And we're going to demold those and set those aside. And now we're ready to mix up our final layer of silicone. Now again, for this last batch, we mixed up another 300 grams of A and 300 grams of B. And again, we're uh, adding silicone pigment. This time, I'm putting both white and red. So uh, again, we have a nice clear contrast between uh, each layer of the mold, so it's easy to track our progress. And of course, we'll be adding the 10 thick thickener. Uh, again, really important there to make sure that we have a brushable paste and not a pourable liquid. And you want to take time to mix that up. One of the nice things about adding the pigment in is we can easily see when it's one uniform color that we have a good mix on our A and B components. Now, just like the previous layer, we want to brush this all over our piece when the silicone is in that uh, 
that more runny liquid stage and that way when the thixotropic additive starts really kicking in we've got it covered enough that we don't have any air entrapment on the surface. So once I've got that brushed all over the piece then I can start troweling it into position. Now you notice that uh, on our previous coat we've spatula or troweled the outside of the piece enough that we have a very nice simplified form and we're going to do that even more so we don't have any undercuts that are going to lock on to the outside resin shell. And one thing you'll notice that chin, even though it technically creates an undercut, you'll see the way this is demolded later on allowed for that. So I wouldn't typically recommend that you have an undercut severe as that uh, chin is there, but uh, you'll see later on because of that curved forehead, that allows us to pull out at an angle out of the finished mother mold. So before any of you uh, seasoned mold makers attack me for this, uh, wait to see how this demolds and it will all make sense in accordance with the prophecy. Now, one of the things I really like to do here is make sure that flange is nice and smooth and as flat as possible because we're going to be embedding those keys on that edge. So we want, we want that to be a nice uniform plane for those keys to uh, stick down to. If our, uh, if our flange is real uneven, it's going to be hard to get those keys to seat evenly and uh, they might pull off later on if, they're, uh, if they don't, aren't seated well into that surrounding silicone. Now, while the silicone is still very wet, this is a point where uh, it's a good idea to embed those keys and get those in place. If you wait too long to embed those keys, they're not going to stick. So make sure you uh, stop at the appropriate time there. This is probably three or four minutes in that we're embedding those keys. And then we use the remainder of that working time to trowel out any undercuts on the rest of our piece. And now once we've applied that final layer ready to move on to our mother mold. Now I like to let it sit for at least a couple of hours uh, before we proceed with our mother mold just to prevent any chance of bonding between the fresh resin and the fresh silicone. And I like to do a little bit of housekeeping here of uh, cutting away any of that excess flange just to tidy up the outside of that silicone mold. And once that's done, we can proceed a number of ways. We could make a plaster bandage shell, as you might have seen in uh, some previous videos. We could use a uh, plaster like Hydrocal and hemp to make a mother mold, uh, or just regular fiberglass and uh, polyester resin. Or in this case, we'll be using the new BR75D. And to prepare for that, we're going to apply a light layer of 2500 spray release. That just to ensure that we get a nice release between the resin and our silicone mold. Now the BR75D is a brushable resin formula that's very simple to use and super strong. When you mix the two components together, they cure to a very hard 75D resin. And you notice I've also cut some little one-by-one one legs, and you'll see how we use those later on. Now, the uh, BR75D, the Part B, has a filler that will need to be suspended and mixed up throughout that Part B. So make sure you take time to shake that up really good so it's all one uniform color before you begin your uh, mixing and measuring process. Now, also another important note about the 75D, this is one-to-one -one mix ratio by weight, not by volume. So make sure you have an accurate gram scale to measure out this material. If you try to measure this uh, by volume, you're going to get off ratio because the two materials have different uh, specific gravities. Now here I'm measuring out about 350 grams of Part A and 350 grams of Part B. And this wound up being way more than I needed for this particular part. Uh, I could have made, I could have gotten by with probably half this much. So remember that for those of you starting out, especially if you're on a tight budget, this is a great, super strong resin for uh, making mother molds like this. Uh, we are really excited about this product because it, it's a really strong, almost disproportionately strong for a uh, the type of resin it is. It's, it's really shocking that it's that strong without any kind of reinforcement fiber in it. So it's a really good resin to use for large mother molds uh, that might span a large area that you don't want warping or anything like that. And it can also be used for brush up castings as you might have seen in some of our previous videos. Now as soon as the A and B react, it forms a thixotropic gel that has about the consistency of sour cream. 
So uh, you can either brush that or trowel it. I like to use a combination of the two. I like to brush it, especially on the keys, so I make sure I don't have any little air bubbles trapped around my keys. And then uh, have a, a stir stick or a popsicle stick handy tr to uh, also trowel it into place as it thickens even more. Now with the BR75D you have about a five to six minute working time at room temperature and about a four hour demold. And remember that uh, like any polyurethane or silicone, uh, heat will accelerate that and cold temperatures will slow it down. So be aware of that if you're working in a really hot area, you're going to have a very uh, short working time. So ideal working conditions for any uh, silicone or polyurethane are going to be right around 72 to 75 degrees. Now since this mold is going to have kind of a, a bell shape as it sits right now, when we flip that over to do our casting later on, it's uh, unless we put it in a bucket or uh, prop it up on something, it's going to want to fall over. So I've cut some little legs for this using a piece of one by one and uh, we're going to embed those on the outside of the mother mold. And what that does is like a little uh, three-legged stool there that will give it something to stand up on when we go to cast into this later on. Now, a quick word about cleanup. One of the reasons you see me mixing in one container rather than using uh, one cup for my A and one cup for my B, if you use one mixing cup for your resin and your silicone, your cleanup is very easy. You can check your work later on. If it all pulls out of the mixing cup easily, uh, then you know you've got a very good uh, mix and your cleanup is very simple and you can easily reuse those mixing buckets later on. So that's that's my case right there for using one mixing cup so I minimize how many cups I need and uh, cleanup is that much easier. And now ready to demold. This was the next day I let this sit overnight and cure completely and I just went ahead and pried the whole thing off of the baseboard and then I had Larry help me, as I mentioned earlier, the way this comes out of the mother mold, it kind of pulls out at an angle, uh, curving up towards the forehead. So we just pull on that. And now we're ready to demold the clay from the brush on silicone mold. And you'll see we have a perfect cast and with hardly any impact on the uh, monster clay positive. So if we wanted, we could touch that up a little bit and mold it again. And now we're ready to trim up any excess uh, on our flange with a razor knife. And our mother mold is ready to go. And because of those little keys we put around that flange, that uh, gel 25 mold seats perfectly into that mother mold. And once we seat that down in the mold, we can just snap those keys into place and we're ready for casting. And those of you who have been asking on Instagram for us to post the video, now you've got it. So there you have the process of making a Platsil Gel 25 brush-on mold with a BR75D shell. And of course, as always, the materials we use in this video are available on our web store at brickintheyard.com. And uh, for those of you who are not followers of our Instagram page yet, be sure to check that out. We post a lot of uh, product updates and little tips and things throughout the week. So be sure to check us out on Instagram.com slash Biddy Mold Supply or at Biddy Mold Supply.